Welcome to Monochemistry. Today we're going to look at the basic ideas involved with thermochemistry, which is the first unit in the Chemistry 12 course. You're in for a real treat because today you're going to get to see me draw some pictures and I just happen to be the absolute worst artist ever. There may be some blind, one-fingered monkeys somewhere that might be... No, they're probably still better than me. Either way, this is, should be entertaining because it will be ridiculously bad. Okay, so before we get too far into the lesson, we want to reintroduce ourselves to the what we call the laws of, of thermodynamics. And there's two that we're going to deal with here. The first one is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. However, it can be transferred from one form to another. You can't make energy, but you can transform it. You can convert it. You can't make it, and you can't break it. Thermodynamic law number two. Any transfer of energy involves a loss of energy to the surroundings. So anytime there's an energy transfer or one type of energy is converted into another, i.e. the first law of thermodynamics, the second law of thermodynamics states that some of that energy will be lost to the surroundings. Okay, so here in our picture, we have, just so we're clear, this would be the surroundings. Okay, and this is the system. Okay, so say we have some sort of reaction going on in here. And there's an energy transfer. Well, some of the energy is going to... Go out here. That's what the the second law of thermodynamics says. So anytime there's a transfer of energy, some of that energy is going to be lost to the surroundings. Okay, so basically what we're left with in that situation is this. The first law of thermodynamics says that the energy of the system plus the energy of the surroundings should equal zero. What? You crazy. No. The energy of the system plus the energy of the surroundings should equal zero. Why? Because according to the first law, there is no such thing as creation or destruction of energy. So these two things should be equal and opposite and therefore should give you a zero overall. I'm going to erase this really quickly. Oops. Don't mind me. I'm going to erase this because that's the first law. So if you need to rewind the video and get that down, that's fine. It's also in your textbook. I'm definitely better at erasing stuff than I am at drawing pictures. There's no question about that. Okay, so that brings us to the second law. Okay, so the reaction of the system, the system loses. So whatever the system loses, the surroundings gain. So the E of the system should be equal to negative E of the surroundings. Okay, or vice versa, right? The E of the surroundings should be equal to negative E of the system. It doesn't matter, right? So whatever one loses, the other one gains. System loses, surroundings gains. Surroundings loses, the system gains. First and second law of thermodynamics. And what the heck does that have to do with chemistry? Well, and these are very important things to keep in mind.
In chemistry, we, we, we usually, pardon me, deal with heat energy. Heat energy is probably one of the most important factors in how chemical reactions work, as well as an important side effect of chemical processes. For instance, a combustion reaction is a good example of a reaction that gives off heat. Okay, so we have some sort of fuel plus oxygen. We're going to get some sort of products plus, most importantly, we're going to get, okay, and it's this reaction right here, or this, whatever this is, not really a reaction, but this type of reaction right here, where we get 95% of the energy that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. If you drive a car, well guess what? This is the reaction that produces the heat that makes your car work. If you plug in uh, your laptop to the wall, this is the reaction where the coal gets burned and produces heat which turns turbines which makes electricity. So thermochemistry is ridiculously important in our lives whether we know it or not. And that brings in the idea of endo versus exothermic. Okay? Well, in this case, an endothermic reaction, endo equals absorbs or gains. An exo means releases. Okay, so if we think of our previous diagram, if we think of the reaction as being the system and the surroundings uh, of the re outside of the reaction as being the surroundings, then we can refer to these reactions as either endo or exothermic. So, for example, this reaction right here, because the process is releasing heat, it is an exothermic reaction. Okay, but any processes where the heat would be on the other side of the equation, in other words, a reaction that requires heat in order to, in order to work, um, is, is called an endothermic reaction. Now here's the tricky part. Every single chemical reaction requires a little bit of energy to get started. However, many of those reactions, once they get started, will actually release heat, more heat than it took to get them started in the first place. Okay, that's where we get the exothermic reaction. However, if they continue to absorb heat from the surroundings, they will be considered an endothermic reaction. Here's for you. Try these. Two examples. I want you to identify them as either endothermic or exothermic. You can bring those answers to class. Make sure you go back and you take notes on what I said. And if you have any questions, make sure you bring them to class. That, in a nutshell, is an introduction to thermochemistry.